stuff about uh, Soviet technology and the MiG-25 uh, being big concerns at the time. And um, But when he finished his entire kind of rant, uh, you know, apparently he across the desk, he pushed a signed copy of J. Allen Hynek's book, The UFO Experience, and kind of like nodded to Emmenager. And apparently Emmenager took this as a kind of, you know, signal that perhaps Weinbrenner was putting on some type of show like just oh, in yeah. case his oh, yeah those, those, those damn MiG, those man. damn migs you know blah 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 those fucking migs those russians are up he to was, no good here's a ufo book he's instant he's Seems instantly weird. changing the subject it's because he's he's obviously what my thing my thing is this i'm like they're because they're these guys are asking questions they have sources right and so obviously at this point because they're making it the military has been like, all right, some of this stuff is classified. Who's leaking this stuff? So they start to think that, like, you know, different people are the source, right, are the source of, like, where this credit information is. So I think Weinbrenner, who was working with them and, like, giving them information, he's doing this because he knows he's under the magnifying glass and that, you know, his wherever they're having a conversation – is bugged or tapped or other people are listening to the conversation and he knows that because it, it seems odd when you listen to this account where he's just like oh yeah the russian robber and he just starts going off and like he's like like completely left field of what of what, what the wants to talk about yeah. right and then as, as he's talking he just silently does he went the the telling part to me is that he silently pushes the book and gives a nod to me that means like I, I can't talk about, yes, you're on the right track, what you're saying, like, yes, but I can't talk here. I can only talk about the big. And then I heard he actually got in trouble for that incident. They wise up to it. He got fired, and then he later took over as the GM of the New York Yankees. What? <laughs> Some of, some of this Stein, information may or may not be true. Oh, <laughs> Steinbrenner, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah, I love guy. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a cow's on, George. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's an impression Brain did, so I dislike yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> Russian man, give it. I can stand up. <laughs> Where's my cow's on? Shirtler. Shirtle. Or Shirtler. So, as the production finally, uh, you know, gets into its final phase, uh, the military apparently pulls their footage they tell you know they kind of straight up tell emanager who's been pushing for the you know to get, get his hands on this footage so they can put it in the the documentary they, they tell him that we can't give it to you anymore classified um, uh, we can't pull out and <laughs> and kind of the, the the reason that they give him like there's yeah, not a specific the fucking, uh, what's it yeah uh yeah to the mortal combat and like Finish him. <laughs> Classified. Uh, well, they they kind of give him the reason. He said like that, that but they can't give it to him because of the Watergate scandal that is going on at the time. Um, Watergate happening in, in seventy two. Um, so it, it, so the whole bullshit. kind of you know the the Watergate scandal, the whole big to do, um, and and that is the reasoning that they give him that they can't release that that footage to him to to put into this. Um, to put in his documentary uh but they end up releasing the rest of it so so what happens uh, you know according to legend is that the what they do is though since they don't have the footage in the uh documentary titled ufos past present and future which ends up getting released in 74 and actually goes on to uh get nominated for a golden globe uh for best documentary um the uh, towards the end instead of having this footage they do this kind of like animated like sets of pictures uh you know sets of uh, uh illustrations of like uh, they, they frame it as a hypothetical about what would happen yeah. if well, a, and, aliens and were to because land because it's it's to me the craziest thing to me um is that hold on before we get any further sorry boy fucking garbage trucks outside can you guys hear that <laughs> I heard like a. Yeah, oh, I just thought it was. I thought it was you on your desk. <laughs> yeah. All That's right. Well, I've... on that note, then let's just take take a quick yeah, beer break. Take a quick, we'll take be a quick right garbage back. break. Garbage yeah. break. <laughs> We're back. Um, as I was saying, the the craziest thing to me about this is that 
when this documentary was released, the fact that it was even Golden Globe nominated, because let's be real here, Jeremy Corbell is never getting nominated for a Golden Globe, right? He <laughs> right? I'm just saying he's never in this in the current. I don't know. State, like you could put Jeremy age, Corbell against something with like you know Planet Earth or something. I can't put them in the same. <laughs> Like, it's true. No, but that's what I'm saying. Is I'm like, it, to me, it's impressive that in this day and age, that this this the, the, a documentary on this subject matter was I mean, this is probably even the nominated. first. Like, has there been any? Like, was is this the OG UFO documentary? I'm sure there was more before this, but maybe this is the best quality. Well, uh, this one's got Adam Sandler and and Eminager, right? <laughs> yeah, that's Eminager is true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, they, they went on to, to release this, this documentary with the, at the end that they had to replace, you know, last minute decision that they didn't get the footage that they wanted. So they had to replace it with this, this hypothetical. So it's, it's kind of went down in history <laughs> as this, uh, you know, the documentary that perhaps may have been the U S government's first attempt, maybe first attempt at soft disclosure putting out mm. there that you know the military i mean it kind of seems that way if you set it up you know or if you frame it in in the idea that um you know it's the u.s military the u.s government called these guys they handpicked these uh two uh documentary dudes from hollywood and they brought them in and they went ahead and said like hey like we can provide you with this information and this footage to support the idea that extraterrestrials are here visiting earth but say already. it's hypothetical not even that, but that's the thing the but hypothetical decision but, was apparently later like that wasn't oh, yeah really? like the, the whole idea to make it hi like a hypothetical was something that was because they couldn't get that actual footage they had to do that or either they were they either they had to do that or they were for they suggested hard suggested that they make it a hypothetical <laughs> instead of an actual um you know base it on you know claims that they had footage and uh but there is actual footage in this right so there's eight seconds of real footage right so they they said they somehow got like eight seconds of the actual footage of of the craft um and and in this documentary so there's like a couple frames uh of what one could say is a ufo because it's just like it, it is a to describe it it is like a, a disc shape shaped craft um you know hovering for a few moments uh and and so it does look very strange and very it's not a very uh orthodox craft that you would have found uh, uh plying the skies of 19 <laughs> you know 1950s 60s or 70s um yeah so there is that. So a lot of people will point to that and they will say that 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 footage is a piece of the original of what they maybe they had gotten their hands on just like a little bit of the footage. Like maybe they gave it a sum and they're like, here, you guys can use that um, and not from what I understood, the, the actual filmmakers saw the real footage. And they got it. It got taken away from them. And this is the only little bit that they were able to keep. I put it in the they, group zealot or it it live stream. They just yeah, they took it back. They like redacted it. I'm like, no, I that can't be in that. the film. When I watched that interview, right, where they both both of them were on stage, they talked about that. right. So I, watching the interview, it's like Shardle says that he saw the footage, but Shardle wasn't the yes. one making the documentary. He was just the one of the one who was going to be the oh, go okay. between between. He was the audio visual guy. He was basically like in the military. We have rates. You have jobs that deal with audio visual stuff. Like in my, in my time in the Navy, we had MCs. You had the media communication people. They're, they're photographers, yep. videographers. Nope. That's all they do. And so it's not unusual for like, you know, at, like an air force base nor uh, Norton, military base they would have somebody who would be like hey we're gonna bring in these guys can you talk film with them and help them do their documentary so he was saying no, that I he know. saw can that you, can, can you guys hear this i'm not sure if you can hear this hopefully you can this is the clip that andrew just andrew just sent me that we can do you want to did you want me to play this andrew well, it's just in this has the actual footage that is supposedly of the real craft, and it's right, not well, him him explaining how he used it or how he got all it. All right, can you guys hear this? Let me let me see if you, we can hear it here. He is author and filmmaker Robert Emmenegger, and former security manager and chief of requirements for the audiovisual program at Norton Air Force Base, Paul Shartle. Gentlemen, Mr. Emmenegger, how did you get involved with UFOs? Well, it was in 1973 when I was vice president at Gray Advertising, and I took time out and went First to. First off. 
Look at those eyes. <laughs> you want to talk about fucking... <laughs> hey, you want to talk... Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these in broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you wanna watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.